But I was, as I was reading it, I was looking at how the fear of God in, in Scripture here, and it talks about our children, grandchildren, and I'm thinking, as today as a society, we are getting to be so ignorant, we don't even know who God is, or if there's a God, and so many are not even going to church anymore, in record numbers, so it's, 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 it's really sad. So starting in verse 1, these are the commandments and statutes and ordinances that the Lord your God has in, in, instructed me to teach you to follow in the land that you're about to enter and possess so that you and your children and grandchildren may fear the Lord your God. in all the days of their lives by keeping all his statutes and commandments. But I give you so that your days may be prolonged. This should all be heartfelt for the ones we don't know Christ. going to start with the sphere of God and worship. You're right. We don't have the fear of God in our lives that we should have because of who He is. And then because we don't, we don't understand what great a salvation that we have in terms of that. So as I present what we've read this week and everything. I want you to think about that. Because I constantly think about how I... There, I had a conversation with my son last night, how he put on the door frames of that house, literally, to love the Lord your God. But yet he's not doing that. And one reason that I feel like he probably isn't doing that is probably because I did not train him up as much as I should. Now that brings me back to, because I don't save him in the first place, it brings me back to being the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much, so that I have to pray for him because I do fall short. But any time we realize that, just like we're going to see through Isaiah when there is a call for repentance, that means we truly repent and we turn to God. It doesn't matter what happened yesterday. It matters what happens today and what you continue on tomorrow. And if you're saved, you're born again to grow and mature, to be like Jesus Christ in this world, to be His hands and feet until He returns. And how great and awesome is our God, and as a result, how great our salvation is. How in the world can we not teach that to our children every single day? Which we'll go on with that scripture in just a minute. Father in heaven, we do thank you and praise you that you are God worthy of so much praise, so much honor, that, the, that you know the stars by name and that they obey the laws that you have set up for them. And you give us, because we're created in your image, you give us the ability to choose you and worship you or not. But as we read and as we see today, as we see all throughout history of mankind, that we are a stiff-necked, rebellious people. Oh, Lord, soften our hearts. You, your scripture says that if we're born again, your words are written upon our hearts. Help us to be, walk in step with the Spirit, to realize the gifts the Spirit's given us, to realize that we never were our, our lives never were our own in the first place. We were created for your purpose, for your will, for your glory, for your honor, and to be a light to this world. And that because of what Jesus Christ has done for us, we're redeemed by the blood of your precious Son. Help us to live as though we truly do believe this and not just go in one ear and out the other. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So this week you should have read 
Isaiah chapter 56 through the end of Isaiah. You should have also read Mark chapter 13 verse 21 through the end and you should have started reading Exodus and got the first eight chapters of Exodus. I have entitled this, Have You Heard? Because as I was reading all of this and I was seeing this pattern, I was seeing that, that Isaiah warned and warned and warned and warned, but only a few actually listened and obeyed. Many listened. What did they do with it? Many people listen today. Many proclaim to, to, to know Jesus Christ. But is He their Savior and is He their Lord? Does He mean everything to you? Jesus summed up the Old Testament's uh, prophecies and everything else, the, uh, the law and everything, in love the Lord your God with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength and to love your neighbor as yourself. So what does that look like? If I am truly loving God, do I not look different than this world? And I've got God in the flesh dwelling as the pattern of how He lived and what He taught. And He said, if you want to be my disciple, He said, count the cost. And He said, don't take your hand and put it on the plowshare and look back longingly at this world. And you must deny yourself, take up your cross and follow after Him. It's something that will cost you everything, but when you, the more that you understand about it, you'll understand that cost is really not a cost at all. It, it's a gift of God that He's letting you experience all these things. You're not giving up anything, but you're gaining everything if you truly believe and you follow after Jesus. So have you heard? Going back to what we read the previous week, Isaiah 55, verses 1 to 3, Come! All who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. You don't do anything to gain this salvation. You can't access God. You sinned against God and deserve His wrath for all eternity. But instead, He comes to you and says, Will you choose me? Why spend money on what is not bread? And your labor on what does not satisfy. But we do that so much. Listen. Listen to me and eat what is good and you will delight in the richest affair. Give ear and come to me. Listen that you might live. Give ear means to listen and to listen means to obey. Isaiah 56, the first uh, two verses are, this is what the Lord says. Maintain, maintain justice and do what is right. For my salvation is close at hand and my righteousness will soon be revealed. Blessed is the one who does this, the person who holds fast. So you've got it summed up with what Jesus said again when he was asked what is the greatest commandment? To love the Lord your God. Don't chase after the idols of this world. Let's go back to the Ten Commandments and not have any other idols before me. And because you do that, because you love the Lord your God, you won't have to worry about coveting or stealing or anything else. Because the love of God, His laws will be written on your heart. You will be, like, you will be His child and you will live like His child. And how do you do that? Here's what the Lord says. Maintain justice. That means we don't just sit back and just pray for it. We go out and do something about the inequalities and the injustice in this world. The fact that some people don't have anything, they don't have a place to lay their head, and they live in this country even. And then the fact that some people are sold as slaves or whatever the thing, the thing is that God has put on your heart, you do something about it. You maintain justice and do what's right. Why? For my salvation is close at hand and my righteousness will soon be revealed. Blessed is the one who does this. The person who holds it fast. Not just does it, but makes it a pattern of their life. That does write the, the laws of God on the doorposts of their houses because they're written on the door, doorposts of their heart and they teach them to their children when they get up, when they sit down, when they go about everything else. And their children see it because of the way they live a life different from this world because it's not focused on the things of this world but the creator of all things. Hear means to listen. It means to obey. It means to do something about it because you respond to love. And we don't, could not ever even know love if God did not first love us. And you can ask a child again, 
And how do they know you love you? They're not normally going to say because you say that you love them. It's because of the things you do for them. They see love in action. So have you heard? If you have heard, then are you obediently living as God's child? And if you are living as God's child, then how are you loving? And I'll even go further than what I've got written down here. How are you loving someone else today? Even your enemy. That's what Jesus taught, isn't it? We were all enemies when we went, he went to the cross and spit in his face and stripped him of his flesh, mocked him, and screamed out for if he was God to come off of that cross and then we wouldn't have our salvation. But instead, Jesus went silently before his accusers and took the wrath of God so that you don't have to. Have you heard? The thing is, as we read through scriptures and we see God's children heard, but they did not listen. And therefore, because they did not listen, they did not do. They didn't live a life that fought for justice and equality, and they didn't live a life of love. They lived a life that still looked like they were the pagans of this world and therefore were not a light to this world. Professing to worship God with their lips, but their hearts were far from Him. They were simply, as Paul puts it, noisy gongs and clanging cymbals without love. The world saw this, and God has to even use the world to put, keep His children in check and do mighty wonders and miracles through the world, through the pagan kings, rather than through His children. So what does the world see from our testimony, from our life? And if they see it, what do you think God knows about your heart? What are your heart focused on? What do you love more than you love God for what He has done for you? If you believe, then have you heard? If you've heard, then do you really, have you really listened? Maybe if you haven't listened, you don't really believe. This is what? You can say a, a bill. You can say, if you can't see it from here, it's got a two and a zero on it. Okay? What, what, what is it? It's a $20 bill. It's money. It's currency. If I put it this way, you know what it is. If I put it this way, you know what it is. Correct? If I put it this way, you still know what it is? If I put it this way, do you still know what it is? Okay? What is this used for? To spend it, to spend it to obtain something else. What are you doing with your life, Christian? The grace that God has given you, the salvation that He offers you. Are you still living like the pagan world or are you living differently, spending the grace and love that He has given you and He says that He'll give you more and more? As you read through your devotions, you read through where, where in Luke, Jesus' disciples asked Him how to pray. And He said, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be Your name because we respect and honor You as God. Your will be done, not mine. That means I have to give up my own. Let me be satisfied with daily bread instead of chasing after the idols of this world. Isn't that what, how Jesus taught us to pray? If we did live that way and honored God and loved others, maybe, just maybe, we would be ushering in the kingdom of heaven here on earth until Jesus returns. If I don't spend that money... What good is it? It didn't serve any purpose, did it? If I just build up treasures and put it all aside and don't spend it. And when you're talking about your faith, you've got a bank account that has so many zeros on it, you can't even fathom that number because of who God is and the grace that He's given you. If you don't step out of the boat, you'll never walk on water, will you? So what about God's Word? What does it say? What about His love for you? What does that tell you? What about His mercy because you deserve something else? And what about His grace upon grace upon grace upon grace that you could be called a child of God and that nothing will separate you from the love of God? 
the young rich ruler that we saw last week, he walked away from Jesus that day, from the one that he called master, the one that he called teacher, the one that he came up and asked the question, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He had studied all of God's word. He knew all the answers in it, but he was unwilling to do it because of what he thought it might cost him. Instead, he built castles on sand, did he not? I hope that one day he, he repented and came to God, and I hope we'll hear his testimony in heaven. But that day he walked away from Jesus and therefore walked away from eternal life because he valued something else more, even though he knew the, the word in and out. And he even thought he kept all the commandments in his own mind, which he certainly didn't because he had other gods before God Almighty. Money is to be spent in exchange for something. So if I spend my life in service of Jesus Christ, you read it this morning, He promises to save your family. Oh, you can take that as hyperbole or however you want to say it or anything else, but I take it as the more I work for the kingdom, the more I'll see kingdom results. Maybe I won't see them in this lifetime, but I will see them because God says His message will not go out void. So I have to live that life, have to assume that. So if my child is walking away even more, like I said, then I lean on the fact that Noah built an ark because of holy fear of God. He condemned the world and was a preacher of righteousness to save his family. And I have to rely on the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So I have to pray, and I have to pray how Jesus taught me to pray. That means that I have to deny myself, take up my cross and follow after Jesus in hopes that God will save my family and save those others that I come in contact with because I did what God tells me to do in His Word rather than just reading it, letting it go in one ear and out the other. I've said it before, I'll say it again. A childlike faith. If you tell them to clean your room and you say, did you hear me? Yes, I have ears, I heard you. But if they don't obey, they really did not hear you, did they? Because they did not obey. Have you really listened? If so, how are you spending each minute that you have left in your life? We have the example of Hezekiah. We have the example of the rich man who built bigger barns. You don't know if you'll have tomorrow. But you've got right now to live for God. I will say what Isaiah 55 wrote again. Come all who are thirsty that you long for that. When you thirst, and thirst is something more than just I have a little desire to drink a little something. It's just your parched. You've got to have water like you've been out on the sea all day long and not had any water to drink and the sun's been hot. There's when you're thirsty. Come to me, all who thirst. Come to the waters. You who have no money, come, buy and eat. Buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen. Listen to me and eat what is good and you will delight in the richest of fare. Give ear and come and listen that you may live. Listen is the word Shema if you're not familiar with what it is in Hebrew. Did you know in Hebrew there is no word for obey? It's the same word. If you hear, it is expected that you obey. Go back to a child again. Clean your room. If they heard you, they will do what? Okay. Oh, Christian, love your enemy. But how many times do you go to bed at night and say, well, there was something he did this today? It's human nature. We fight a battle with that spiritual nature that we have, the human flesh. Because we, even though we want to do good, our, our flesh wants to desire something e different, which is evil, which is dark. So we have to replace it with the light. We have to trust in God. We have to read His Word. We have to pray. We have to fellowship together. And we need to do it constantly as though it were living water. Isaiah 56, 1 and 2 then, this is what the Lord says, maintain justice and do what is right for my salvation is close at hand and my righteousness will soon be revealed. 
blessed. Blessed, this blessing that you have. God didn't have to put a blessing there. Blessed is the one who does this. And I have to say again, one way I'm going to be blessed is to see my children and my grandchildren and their children in heaven. According to His will, according to His purpose. But I have to be that good, faithful steward of what He's given me. And it's the person who holds it fast, who doesn't toss around like a wave of the sea. James says that person is good for nothing if their faith isn't constant. Hear, listen, whatever you want to say means obey and do. Respond in obedience. And we're told to respond to the word. Isaiah warned, people heard, but they did not listen. As we read further in Isaiah 56, verse 10, it says, Israel's watchmen, the one who are supposed to be looking for this, are, are blind. They all lack knowledge. They are all mute dogs. They cannot bark. They lie around and dream. They love to sleep. They are dogs with mighty appetites. They never have enough. They are shepherds who lack understanding. They all turn to their own way. They seek their own gain. Listen to that. And look at it compared to Christians and to the church. This was Israel's watchmen, the one that was supposed to watch for the coming of the Lord, for His promises, for everything. They're blind. They lack knowledge. They cannot speak. They lie around and dream. They are asleep. They have mighty appetites, but for the wrong thing. They are shepherds who lack understanding. They turn to their own way for their own gain. Chapter 57, verse 8. <clears throat> Behind your doors and your doorposts you have put your pagan symbols. Forsaking me, you uncovered your bed. Talking about your adultery. Boy, that doesn't go consistent with Deuteronomy 6, does it? Well, I'm going to read you a little further than what Barry read in Deuteronomy 6. These are the commands, decrees, and the, and the laws of the Lord your God directed to me to teach you to do what? To observe. In the land you are crossing, the Jordan to possess. And look what home we're working for. We're already citizens there. We're already seated with Jesus in heavenly realms. Why? Verse 2, so that you, your children, and their children after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by doing what? Keeping His decrees and commandments that I give you so that you may enjoy long life. Verse 3, hear Samah, Israel, and be careful to... Shema again, or Shema, however you want to say it. It's S-A-M-A -A in the Hebrew. Hear and obey. The word is the same. Hear and hear. Because if you're truly hearing me, you will respond to my words. And my words are God's words up here. Not, I'm not trying to say anything other than preach the, the word to you. Hear and hear. Because you've heard, you obey. So that it may go well with you, and that you may increase greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey. Just as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Oh, this is what Jesus kind of summed up, isn't it? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them or diligently teach them to your children. How? Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the doorposts of your houses and on your gates. But here we are years later and Isaiah said, Behind your doors and your doorposts you have put your pagan symbols. Forsaking me, uncovering your bed, you adulterer, you. Which way are you living? Do you see the promises of God besides the commandments that you'll be blessed and the promises that He gives to your children and your children's children? Well, let's go to the New Testament then. Probably the first letter written to the church, which is grafting into Israel, correct? James 1 verse 22, Do not merely listen to the words and so deceive yourself. If you listen and don't obey, there is a very good possibility that you are deceiving yourself on who you claim to be. Oh, well, let's go back. Israel's watchmen, they're blind. They lack knowledge. They're mute dogs. 
That doesn't sound like a child of God. They all turn their own way. They seek their own gain. Hmm. I go back to James then. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Instead, do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law, and we just went over some of that law, the law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. To be hearers of the word and doers of the word. Because to hear means to obey. So or do you truly hear? I don't know about when you read that, but I think about what does that mean? To go and look at a mirror and then walk away and forget what I look like. That might mean different things to you, but when I look in the mirror... I make sure that I look presentable, right? I mean, that's why I look in the mirror to say, do I need to comb my hair? Or do I need to put a little makeup on? I don't put makeup on. I'm talking, okay? What it is to do to be presentable, all right? If I'm going to be presentable as Christ in this world, I have got to be trained up in His Word. I've got to be relying upon the Spirit. I've got to be prayed up so that I know when I go out in the world, I'm a representative of Jesus Christ. I don't want to walk immediately away and forget what I've read here and not be a doer of the word. I mean, that's, that's what he's giving this picture for us so we can see that. He said, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. Then he gives the example. And then he follows up with whoever looks intently into the perfect law. So as I read God's word to see what God's laws are so that I can obey them... Because if I hear them, I should obey them. So I should be constantly thinking, how can I be obedient to God? And then as I see how Jesus expounded upon the word and says, if you have anger in your heart towards your brother, you're guilty of murder. How can I apply that to my life? How can I be different? How can I be like Christ in this world? Oh, God, cleanse me of my unrighteousness. Forgive me of my sins, especially my anger that I shouldn't have in my heart because you've forgiven me wherever it leads you. Don't walk away from that mirror and forget that you're a child of God, born again. That you are to be the hands and feet of Christ in this world. Don't just walk away and then live your life like normal, having read your wor the Word, having prayed, but not living differently in this world. So I have to ask myself, what does my life look like? You can say, what does your life look like? Who am I? Am I truly a child of God? Oh, I'm going back to that, man, that young ruler now. Will I inherit eternal life? What's keeping me from living the life that I should, selling everything that I have, and giving it to the poor? There's you've got your justice. And then coming following Jesus. What would keep me from walking truly for Jesus today? Let me go look in the mirror again. 1 John 5, verse 2, this is how we know that we, that we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out His commands. In fact, this is love for God, to keep His commands. And His commands aren't burdensome. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. Isaiah said previously in Isaiah 48, verse 17, this is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God who teaches you what is best for you, who directs you in the way that you should go. Verse 18, if only you had paid attention to my commands. Your peace would be like a river, your well-being like the waves of the sea. Your descendants would have been like the sand, your children like its numerous... N numberless grains. So he must not be talking about the number of Israel. He must be talking about those who are truly Israel. Their name would never be blotted out nor destroyed from before me. Leave Babylon. Leave the world behind. Flee from the Babylonians. In Sunday school we're going to be going through First Peter and I think that's what the ladies are going through too. And you find out that Peter is writing from Rome which he calls Babylon. 
that we need to come out from the ways of the world. Oh, that takes me to Revelation. And I know what's going to happen to the kings and kingdoms of this world. So am I living for them or am I living for the King of kings and Lord of lords? Am I bowing down and professing His name as, as Lord of all of my life now? So what did Jesus say in Luke eleven twenty eight? 28? Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it. In John 10, 27 and 28, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. Well, I, the young rich ruler said, was told he had to get rid of all those other idols for he could follow, wasn't he? Do I have any idols I need to get rid of? Jesus said, I give them eternal life. They shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. In John 14, 23 and 24, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them and he will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. In John 15, 12, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. It seems like something too big that we could even do, but then we've got to go back and say, say that we can never save ourselves and we can never become like Christ, but God will do it. What's impossible for man is possible with Christ, for God. But will you obey Him rather than just hearing Him? Paul writes this in Romans chapter 10, verse 8. But what does it say? Talking about the Word of God. The Word is near you, it is in your mouth, and it is in your heart. That is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. If, we, if, we declare with, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As Scripture said, anyone who believes in Him will never be put to shame. I've read you these things already today. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile against Israel and the church. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on Him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the name of one they, on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they're sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Are you bringing the good news especially to your family? Are you consistent about it? Do you do it day in, day out, as you go to bed, as you get up, as you go about your ways? Is, does God mean that much to you and your salvation? Verse 16 of Romans, 10, of Romans chapter 10, But not all the Israelites accepted the good news. For Isaiah said, Lord, who has believed our message? He cries out because he sees out there so much that people are not doing for God that he cries out and says, Who? Is there anyone who has believed? I mean, Elijah asked to be taken to heaven because he didn't think there was anyone left. Who has believed our message? Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. But I ask you, did they not hear? Of course they did. Their voice has gone out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. Again I ask, did Israel not understand then? First Moses says, I will make you envious by those who are not a nation. I will make you angry by a nation that has no understanding. And Isaiah boldly says, I was found by those who did not seek me. I revealed myself to those who did not ask for me. But concerning Israel, he says... All day long I have held out my hands to a disobedient and obstinate people. I guess you could read that and say, well, if I don't live for Jesus, at least God will save who He wants to save. But He wants you to be His hands and feet if you're truly His child. How can you not proclaim if you're truly His child? Romans 12, verses 1 through, th through 3. One of the verses that I go back to all the time, and if you don't memorize Scripture, you should memorize some, and you can start here. Therefore, I urge you, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, in view of God's mercy to you, to do what? To offer your bodies what you do as a living sacrifice. This is holy and pleasing to God. This is what true and proper worship looks like. 
So what we cannot do is verse 2. We cannot conform to the pattern of this world. But complete opposite, what we have to do is be transformed by the renewing of our mind, the way that we think. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. So as I change the way I think, I realize that I am not my own. I am God's creation. And on top of that, my sin debt I could never pay. I should be facing God's wrath for all eternity. But instead, Christ loved me. And I simply believe by faith. And I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. So therefore, I am not my own. I am His and I am born again, and I'm a new creation to do the things that God planned on me to do for long ago to be His masterpiece, as Ephesians 2.10 says. Is that how I'm living my life? Verse 3, For by the grace given to me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourselves more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment. Isaiah 57, verse 13, But whoever takes refuge in me will inherit the land and possess my holy mountain. Isaiah 58 gives us a good example of hearing verses, verses really listing. Your fastings end in quarrels and strife. <laughs> They've gone to fast and they end in quarrels and strife. And striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. Verse 6, is not this the kind of fasting that I have chosen, chosen? To loosen the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke. To set the oppressed free and break every yoke. Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor, wander, poor wanderer with shelter? When you see the naked, to clothe them and, and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood? Then your light will break forth like the dawn. Isaiah 59, verse 9 and 10. We look for the light, but all is darkness. For brightness, but we, look in deep, but we walk in deep shadows. Like the blind, we grope along the wall, feeling our way like people without eyes. Isaiah 60, verse 1. Arise, Jerusalem, and let your light shine for all to see. Isaiah 61, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to what? Proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness, from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Verse 6, and you will be called priests of the Lord. You will be named ministers of God. Verse 10, I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for He has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness. Can those verses be the pattern of your life? That you realize that and proclaim that as your testimony, as your wit witness, even to the point of martyrdom? Isaiah 62, you will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow. You will be a crown of splendor in the Lord's hand. Verse 6, as a bridegroom rejoices over his bride, so will your God rejoice over you. Isaiah 63, I will tell of the kindness of the Lord, the deeds for which he, he is to be praised, according to all that the Lord has done. Isaiah 64, since ancient times no one has heard nor ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who acts on behalf of those who wait for Him. Verse 6, All your righteous acts are like filthy rags. Verse 8, You, Lord, are our Father. We are the clay. You are the potter. We are the work of your hand. Isaiah 65, To a nation that did not call on my name, I said, Here I am. Here I am. All day long I held out my hands to obstinate people who walked in ways not good, pursuing their own imaginations. Verse 12, I will destine you for the sword, and all of you will fall in the slaughter. For I called, but you did not answer. I spoke, but you did not listen. My servants, though, they will eat, but you will go hungry. My servants will drink, but you will go thirsty. My servants will rejoice, 
but you will be put to shame. My servants will sing out of the joy of their hearts, the sovereign Lord will put you to death. But to his servants he will give another name. Verse 17, See, I will create a new heaven and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. My chosen ones will long enjoy the work of their hands, what they did with the lives that God gave them. Verse 23, They will not labor in vain, nor will they bear children doomed to misfortune, for they will be a people blessed by the Lord. How do you want to live your life then? Do you want to live it for the things of this world or do you want to live it for eternal things? Do you want to lead your children in righteousness because you follow in the ways of righteousness or do you want to be the blind leading your children blindly? Isaiah has 66 chapters. Chapter 66, this is what the Lord says. Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What I put my feet on what we value so much that we worry about what we eat or drink or whatever it is, the things we live for, everything else. Verse 2, These are the ones I look on with favor, those who are humble and contrite in spirit and who tremble at my word. Verse 5, Then hear, which means hear and obey, hear the word of the Lord, you who tremble at His word. Your own people will hate you and exclude you because of my name. Let the Lord be glorified. All mankind will come and bow down before me, says the Lord. And then it chapter or the book of Isaiah ends this way. If this is not a warning, I don't know what it is. And they will go out and look on the dead bodies of those who rebelled against me. The worm that eats them will not die. The fire that burns them will not be quenched. And they will be loathsome to all mankind. Many profess the name of Jesus Christ. Many in Israel proclaim to be Israel. But only a few truly worshiped God. We finished reading Mark's gospel also. And as you read through, you saw the teachings that Jesus taught. You, you, you read them, or at least I hope you did. And you see the passion that Jesus underwent. It was so unjust what happened to him and everything else. But, but God knew this from the beginning of time, that because of your sin, he would have to pour out his wrath unjustly on his son so that by his stripes we would be healed. Is this what you believe? If you read, you understand that some... Bibles don't have all the verses in Mark because there's different transcripts that have an ending, whether you have a short ending or a long ending. The short ending ends this way. Jesus Himself sent them out from the east to the west with a sacred imperishable proclamation of eternal salvation. Is that what you believe? Have you been sent out? The Great Commission says to go and teach and preach and make disciples thereof. Or if you have a longer version, verse 20 says, Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere. And the Lord worked with them and confirmed His word by the signs that accompanied, it, by, that accompanied it. The disciples were not hearers of the word only. They were hearers and doers. And as I said, James, the brother of Jesus, who at one time didn't believe Him at all, we have that in Scripture, has to write a letter to the new Israel, the new church, to those scattered abroad. He has to write a letter that says, Don't be hearers only, guys, but be hearers and doers. Because if you're hearers only, look at what the Old Testament says. You're deceiving yourself. You're not true believers. You're not of the faith of Abraham. You're not worshiping God. And you're certainly not a light to this world. So we started reading Exodus also, and you should have seen how Moses argued, but God used a murderer, right? That's what we see first, to lead His people, to perform mighty, wondrous deeds by the hand of God. And I always think when I read that, that Aaron got to do what Aaron got to do simply because Moses argued. So God uses again, and I'm not saying anything negative about that but all the things that Aaron 
did, Moses could have done if he would have been willing to do them. You can't walk on water unless you step out of the boat. It's good that somebody walks with you. So I said, don't take what I'm saying wrong there. But Moses argued and argued and argued with God about why he couldn't do these things instead of just obeying God. Exodus 1 verse 8, this is from the King James Version. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. Hmm. The NLT reads this way, Eventually a new king came to power in Egypt who knew nothing about Joseph or what he had done. So Genesis, we end with God's people coming and growing in strength and Joseph's faith, even though the circumstances that happened to him being a light to the world, even the pagan pharaoh or king of Egypt. But time passes and we don't write down the commandments of God on our doorpost and we don't talk about them when we go to bed and we don't talk about them when we get up and we don't talk about them when we go about then down the road they're going to forget about the God that we professed aren't they kind of what you said we were at now in this country because that's not the history of the church in this country by no means but it's the pattern that we're in now your life belongs to God are you his obedient child and are you lighting up this world and yes it will cost you the things of this world but they are nothing verse 21 even the and because the midwives feared God he gave them families of their own they could have faced being killed because they wouldn't kill all the baby boys but they wouldn't do it because they feared God more and God blessed them by giving children of their own now everything I've read I've sat back for a minute and say you know what happened to their babies and their grandbabies they're in heaven because they were faithful. I don't know that that's a fact that they all are. God is sovereign, but I know that they stepped up and they didn't fear the Pharaoh of that world, the kings of this world, that, that even their own life. And it says that God gave them family. So I know that they wrote those commandments on the doorposts of their, their homes and wrote them in their hearts and lived them. And I have to look at the promises that God made. In Exodus 7, verse 6, the, the plagues have begun, and if you study the plagues, they are in direct confrontation to Egyptian gods of that time. But the first plague has to deal with blood, doesn't it? Verse 16 of Exodus 7, Then say to him, the Pharaoh, the king of the world, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has sent me to say to you, the God of Israel, the one that we should be proclaiming and should be a light to the world, he has sent me to say to you, let my people go so that they may worship me. If you study that word, you'll know that it talks about a reverent bowing down, that it talks about sacrifices. There's a cost involved and you don't give God your second hand. You give him the best. But just sum all that up, that they may go and worship me in the wilderness, a place that's not even their home, a place they have to leave the comforts of this world and trust God that He will take them to the promised land and our promise is in heaven. But until now you have not listened. This is what the Lord says, By this you will know that I am the Lord. With the staff that is in my hand I will strike the water of the Nile and it will be changed into blood. The fish of the Nile will die and the river will stink. The Egyptians will not be able to drink its water. So if I don't believe, truly believe, that Jesus' blood was poured out to save my life, then I probably won't hear and obey, will I? But if I truly believe that, I don't have to worry about what I drink and live off of in this world or for all eternity because that blood gives me living water that will quench forever and ever and ever and ever. So do I truly believe the living water that Jesus is offering me? And do I truly live for the promise that God has that I will spend eternity with Him? So how should I live today? What are you doing today? to hear and obey God. And what are you going to do tomorrow and the next day?
with this precious salvation that God Almighty has given to you for, because you believed in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, and professed it. Father in heaven, we thank you and praise you for your word. We thank you for the warnings that come from Isaiah. We thank you for the words that we've read in our devotions and, and Jesus' words in Mark. Lord, as we read Exodus, open up our hearts to not look at, at your law as burdensome or anything, but look at it as words that lead to life. Let us also see that we cannot keep it. And you are so gracious to, con to continue for all eternity loving us. Help us to believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ, to know that we are His hands and feet, to know that God living in us does make us priests. It sets us aside for a holy job, and we are to offer up sacrifices that are pleasing to you. We only have one life to have the opportunity to do that rather than one life to live for our own glory and our own gain. We only have one life to proclaim your salvation, your greatness to our children, to our grandchildren, and to everyone that we get the opportunity to. So help us live as foreigners and sojourners in this world, Lord, because we do have a better home. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.